uh, let's go ahead and get started here. It's after seven. Uh, welcome everybody to our first virtual club meeting. Uh, it's good to have the people on here. Roland has kindly offered the service of his his video conferencing service for this, and uh, appreciate him doing that. He's also recording this, so we can put it on our web page. So those that haven't been able, weren't able to attend will be able to at least watch and see what was going on with our club meeting. I'm Rob Andrews, N7PVN, president of the West Desert Amateur Radio Club. Um, let's go ahead and get started. We won't do the Pledge of Allegiance since there's no flags in my office area to turn the, the video to. <laughs> but uh, we'll go ahead with a treasurer's report. Mert, would you like to take care of that for us? I guess I should unmute my uh, computer here. So yeah. Uh, so... Pleasure report as of uh, April 1st, 2020. Um, we had two new members come into the club. So that was $20 that was added to the club. Um, we had on March 17th, we had three tests. That was $42. And then a group of our, um, our club, I, Roland, Roger, Norm, who else was there? They went down to the Blue Peak and did a test, and that brought 436.25 into the club. Um, there was a deposit of 287.36. That was from the technician boot camp, and a couple of checks were written, which were um, both of them to Roland. One was 301.95 for the technician boot camp tax renewal fees. Um, the other one was 248.40, which was for postage um, for the te for the the testing for W5YI or WY5I <laughs> testing. And uh, so the ending balance as of today was 985.51. Very good. Uh, you also had something with the ARRL you wanted to cover, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I have two or three other things, if that's okay. Well, well, Go I have, for it. Well, Let's get it done. Okay, so first of all, the ARRL, now that you brought it up, Rob, um, we as a club, if we sign up for the ARRL, the club gets um, $15. That's one $5 to the club. So if you want to sign up for the ARRL, um, I've determined that uh, – Let's do it as a club. So on Monday, or if it needs to be pushed back a little bit further, that's fine too. Um, I'd like to send um, some new memberships to the AARL if there's anybody out there that wants to do it. If you'll just let me know, that'd be great. Um, the other thing is um, the DK, the not the decal, uh, the 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 logo. There's the, that's the word I was looking for. The logo for the the club, the WDARC club logo, um, was, um, I had that revamped. It was kind of a little, I asked Roland to send it to me and um, a, a guy, he was gonna print some possible stickers and some hats and stuff. But before I jumped into having anybody else do it, I wanted to ask the club if there's anybody out there that does that for a living. And if there is, then, um, I think it'd be great to get some stickers, uh, decals to put on our car or whatever you want them for, put on your computer, or whatever. And then um, some hats for the club. I've got a, a quote from a guy in Kaysville, but I don't want to use him if there's somebody in the club that can use that work instead. So um, if we go with the guy in Kaysville, um, it's $15 for the hat. And then for a four by four sticker, it's, um, two dollars so um, anyway throw it out there if there's anybody that does it let me know i'd love to keep that money in the club rather than send it up to Kaysville. and i'm looking at my notes and i think that's it for now so that's all i've got all right thank you thank you mert appreciate that uh any other financial business that needs to come up okay let's take a vote on the uh treasurer's report all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
No, it sounds like it's unanimous. It looks like that your financial report has been accepted. Awesome, thanks, All right. Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mert. It's kind of difficult. <laughs> it's kind of a learning curve here. <laughs> All right, Rona, would you like to uh, take over for a minute and read the minutes from our last meeting? Okay, the, <clears throat> the meetings from the West Desert Amateur Club Radio, Amateur Radio Club at 12 EOC on, May, on March 4th, 2020. The meeting began at 7 p.m. With, with President Rob Andrews welcoming the club. The pledge was led by Don Aaron. Minutes was read by Rona Boutwell. Mi motion to accept was by Don Aaron and um, Jean May is second, accepted by the club. Roland Smith presented, about, presented an update about the boot camp. The general boot camp is planned for fall and after our general class is offered. Upcoming training was, is going to be the Web EOC, May, March 25th at 7 p.m. at the EOC, and Orion Disaster Training, April 1st. Uh, May 2nd, there will be emergency mock drill. Mert Russo um, later on did the minutes. Uh, motion, by, motion to accept by Don Aaron and seconded by Roland Smith, accepted by the club. Rob Andrews presented for reimbursement for, Rob, for Roland Smith for website renewal, as well as other costs incurred for the club. Cost was $301.95. Motion to accept by Jean May and seconded by um, Glenn Murray and accepted by the club. Tom Carlisle did a presentation and demonstration on the use of mesh network. The meeting was adjourned at 8 p.m. with Glenn Murray motioning Robert's, um, Rowan Smith seconded and accepted by the club. All right, I noticed you had sent that out. Is there anybody who has any corrections or additions to the uh, minutes? And I messed up the last time. Let's do a motion to accept the minutes of the last West Desert Amateur Radio Club meeting. Do we have a motion to accept? I motion. All set, Glenn. Okay, very good. Uh, vote, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Who were, the, who were the two that motioned to accept? I motioned to accept and Glenn motioned to second, or Glenn seconded. Tom? No, Mike. Okay, Mike Stewart? Sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll step back now, take a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Mr. Roland, I saw a motion. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Sounds like it's unanimous. Okay, let's move on to other club business. First of all, we are canceling the uh, May 2nd exercise. It's gonna be postponed till uh, probably mid to late summer. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Roger Redmond, KE7AFB, the club is currently running two nets per day. There's one at 1 p.m. that is an information net. And Roland has been kind enough to take and give us updates on the status of the COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing right now. And the 9 p.m. is a welfare check. And I would like to encourage people that if you know people that are shut-ins that are by themselves, please check in on them, make sure that they know they're not alone. Uh, the nets are mainly to give people somebody to talk to in the ham radio community, but we also need to watch out for our neighbors and our friends, make sure that they know there is, you know, something, there's somebody out there that cares about them. I understand the stir crazy thing. I'm stuck at home for a, still another week, but uh, it's, uh, you know, at least I have people here I can talk to and things I can do. Um, Let's see, what was the other thing? Uh, let's see here. I think that was all I had. Roland did mention that we do have some people now that have lost their jobs. So if you know of jobs that are open, please let us know on that nine o'clock net so that we can uh, get people out, help them find something to do until this thing blows over and we can move back into our normal lives. All right, and Roland. Are you there? I am here. 
Awesome. Are you ready to do the presentation on Orion? I am. Okay, so. We'll turn the time over to you, sir. All of you out there, if you, since we're doing this, let's go ahead and uh, mute our mics so we don't pick up any extra noise and we can hear the presentation. Okay. Go ahead, Roland. All right, I think, uh, can you all see the bear chasing the motorcycle? Or the bicyclist? Yeah. Okay, cool. Nope, absolutely not. No, I'm oh, kidding. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> the, uh, all right, so um, we get to our first slide. We're just going to talk today a little bit about the uh, the Orion Damage Assessment app. The uh, this this is an app for for smartphones and tablets. The state of Utah has licensed the app. Uh, for, yeah, for actually, I understand a fairly good chunk of change, and uh, Tooele County has adopted the app as well. The uh, we've been we've been asked to uh, to assist the county in the, in the wake of an of an incident associated with it. The important thing to know is that you know for you to remember and understand, we are not trained building inspectors or assessment personnel. You know, essentially what we're going to do is apply baseline data or initial assessment information and then turn that over to a uh, uh, to, to, to the, uh, the proper people who can figure it out and know what to do with it in the, in the process. The, uh, so we essentially have three, three assignments. The first one we were, uh, is to do a baseline assessment of the public facilities, et cetera, around, around the county. There are about, right now we we're up to about a hundred of those. Those uh, structures include city and county buildings, schools, church buildings, cell towers, electrical distribution centers, natural gas distribution locations, roads, bridges, and reservoirs, and probably more. The, uh, what we'd like to do is to get uh, assist the county in getting, uh, you know, baseline and, proper, and most importantly pictures of, of these facilities. And uh, so that later on, if there is an incident, then they've got something to compare it to. Now, originally on May 2nd, that's just what we as amateur operators are going to be doing, was going out and doing these assessments. That's been moved or postponed. We don't have a date on it yet, but uh, Hopefully, sometime in in uh, July or August, we can uh, you know bring that back into the uh, in, in, into our work. Following an incident, however, you know our our mission will be to as quickly as we can go back out and do a follow up and uh, you know get additional pictures and other information as best we can, and then uh, turn that back over to the uh, to the county officials for their follow up and for their work. And then finally, uh, as time permits, Tula County Emergency Management would like a baseline of every house in the county. Um, the, uh, uh, now that, that, <laughs> that is no small uh, task, and uh, we'll, see how that, we'll see how that goes you know, as, as we move forward. So how, do, how does the app work? It essentially runs on Android and iOS devices. You need to be fairly current. Uh, with with them, you know, within the you know have a device that's uh, you know within the last couple of years, I think before it will you know before it to run very well. Uh, essentially, the the app synchronizes with a with a companion website, and I'll show you that website in just a minute. The, the app downloads the uh, pertinent data associated with the incident that that we're interested in, and then. <clears throat> And then, and then it walks you through the process of doing an assessment of a particular uh, facility. The, uh, uh, what we don't know, which is probably um, a significant part of that information, we just uh, leave that blank and we leave it for the experts and so on to complete. The app will, if you have, depending on how you set your settings, the app will, will synchronize either over cellular data and cellular data rate supply, or only only synchronizes when you're on Wi-Fi and connected to Wi-Fi. And personally, that's the way I have my app set. You know, it's, uh, there's no reason for it to be uh, continually talking over the uh, <coughs> over the cellular data, even though I have an unlimited data plan. The uh, the app takes advantage of the uh, 
um, uh, your GIS information in your in your phone, the uh, location data in your phone, so that when you when you're literally at some place, it'll figure out where you are and what the address is and everything else associated with it. It'll go out and get the tax data, and uh, you know, and fill that in as well. So we have basic information about the particular facility you're looking at. The uh, and everything in the app is all oriented around FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency's definitions of terms and so on over it. And very importantly, the app includes the ability to take pictures of the facility, and uh, and of course, the more pictures, the better, uh, uh, as it moves along. The dashboard, this is uh, what the dashboard looks like, and I'm going to bring it up live in just a minute. The, uh, essentially, uh, the dashboard is, an app, is a map, and the map shows the various facilities that have been uh, assessed for that particular incident. And, uh, uh, and, and then over on the right-hand side would be where all the statistics, statistical information would be shown. Uh, you know, in this particular case, the, we're, these are the baseline things that we've been doing. And so consequently, there is no um, impact you know, associated with, we're assuming that all of those are um, okay. All right, so let's uh, see about looking at the app itself. We'll start with the, uh, with the dashboard. So this is a this is what the dashboard looks like. I have currently there are a number of incidents of, you know up there available. This is the incident that's assigned to us, the West Desert uh, Amateur Radio Club baseline. And essentially, our job is to go out and and do the baseline assessment on a number of uh, of uh, public facilities. You know, for instance, if I click on this one over here, this is one that uh, Elisa. Uh, Wadsworth did. The uh, we get, you know, we get uh, information about the uh, the facility, and uh, I think right here we could see the pictures which that uh, she took while she was there. So, so many of you might might recognize one of the Grantsville Stake Centers, you know, type of an affair. The, uh, um, quick question, Roll, 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 Roll. Go ahead. Um, will we have access to both the website and the app or just the app? Okay, you will have view access to the website as well as full access on the app. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me get back to here. The, uh, this, uh, I've got, I'm, you know, another example, I think uh, this might be somebody's uh, house that we may recognize or know him out in Erda. The, uh, so this is an example of a baseline evaluation of a, of, of a residential property along with, uh, you know, the associated pictures. Nice mask out there. The, uh, so, so that's what the app looks like on the, uh, uh, what's what the dashboard looks like on, on the computer. Uh, and what I wanna do is bring up how the app looks like on your phone or on your, your smartphone. So let me get moved over here. I should have had this little app open earlier. The, uh, well, we can get rid of the bear. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, did anybody have any questions up to this point while I'm waiting for uh, uh, the QuickTime player to load? Oh, I'm just glad. Did uh, you say that there would be training set up? Uh, yep, I'm going to talk about training in just a moment. Okay. Okay. But yes, we definitely got to, uh, got, got to do a little bit more. Uh, um stuff with training okay
All right. Theoretically, my my iPad should show up here. And it's giving me an error message. Ah, figures. Uh, everything works in, in practice until you actually, uh, you know, go to do it in real time, I think. So we'll try that one more time. Okay. Oh, that look, that's looking better. There we go. Okay. So when the app when the app opens, essentially it will show you what uh, what incidents are available for you. Uh, during training, we'll be using the bottom one called Orion Training. And when you're actually out doing assessments, we'll use the next one up called the uh, West Desert Amateur Radio Club Baseline. When you tap on that, that brings you to the next screen, which shows you all of the facilities that have currently uh, are, are entered into the database, into the system. The, uh, and when you're ready to do a new one, you just touch on the add new address and, uh, and, and the process begins. You know, if I say, um, uh, it's asking me about GPS and so on, but if I were to uh, acquire the GPS information, if it's available, it'll figure out the address and everything else associated with it, the type of an affair. And uh, looks like it's trying to do that. It's identified it. So I say, yep, I like that. And wants me to further clarify which one it is. There it is. And it begins now to, and we can now begin to fill out the information associated with, with this particular, uh, with this particular address, the you know, type of affair. We can go through, um, I'm gonna go back to one that's already been done. Um, let's look at this one. Once you have that first part filled out, essentially you just go down, you just go down this set of, of uh, icons. The, the first one is the, is what you just, you know, the first thing you filled out, you fill that out. The next section, it talks about what the inspection, the damage looks like. When we're doing the initial assessment, there is no damage. The, uh, uh, it uh, gives you an ability to take pictures and uh, and it geocodes them and gives them a date and time stamp associated with it. The, uh, if it was, uh, if this is during an incident, we could identify what kind of fatalities and other is issues there are. We can talk about whatever special needs there might be in that particular location. We can, uh, if there's insurance information and so on. So during the, during the after an incident, when we're actually doing an assessment, we can talk to the people that are there and, and get their, you know, as much information as we can. Contact information, any notes. Do you have any uh, particular information about uh, uh, any triage or preparations that are important? And, uh, and then there's a place for the state and FEMA to be able to do their reviews. Like I said, it's just a very straightforward process. It walks you through the whole the whole thing from front to back. It's a, it's very it's very it's actually it's very very easy to to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of you. Okay. Um, quick question, Roland. Yeah. Um, has there been any luck on? The EOC being able to unprint the ID bad badges because I know that like for me when I'm out doing this I'd prefer to have a bad setting that I'm doing this. Yeah, well, that's going to be required actually for you to have a badge. And uh, we were we working with Robin on when we were going to be able to do the badging. 
and uh, and at the moment that's uh, uh, you know on, on hold. The, the right. Student, we're going to have to have that on hold for a little bit because we're trying to limit people coming into our building and being close and taking that picture. You kind of have to be closer than six feet. So we're going to have to kind of wait. What if you've already got a, had your picture and everything done? Um, I can go in and look, but it probably won't be till maybe next week because we're busy doing other stuff. So all of that kind of got pushed aside for now, but I'll try to look next week and see if I can get it to work or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is this Casey? Is that? Who? Yes. Okay. I'll look. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about training. Uh, I participated in, in uh, uh, TCEM has been doing some training for building inspectors and, and folks over the school and so on. And I participated in a couple of those training sessions. The actual training itself, once everything is on the app is set up, takes only about a half an hour. It's very, it's very straightforward to do. But on the other hand, getting the app onto your smart device, getting the credentials verified and the initial data synchronization and all, all that, it, it, it uh, seems to always have issues. And, uh, um, and so consequently, uh, we're going to do the training using Zoom, like we are on tonight. Uh, we'll be doing it in small classes, about four or five people per class. And we're expecting that we'll take about 45 minutes to, uh, to, to do a session through that. At the end of the session, what we're going to want you to do is go do a, 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 a baseline assessment on wherever it is that you live. And, uh, and we can use that to uh, determine whether or not your, your app is working correctly and so on for you. Uh, you'll need to sign up for the training. So in order to do that, you go to the, our West Desert Amateur Radio Club website, http colon slash slash westdesertarc.org and click on the WDRC event registration and then select the Orion Damage Assessment app and, and uh, register for the event. And we'll be making the classes up on a first come first serve basis. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Let's see. Oh, well. That's not helpful. Let's try this again. <clears throat> I don't know about the rest of you, but the last week or so, my internet has really slowed down. Yeah. So anyway, you go to the West Desert Amateur Radio Club. It's all those homeschoolers, Roland. Yeah, that's what it is. And click on WDARC event registration. The uh, this web page will come up, select the Ryan Damage Assessment App Training, click on register for the event and submit. And you'll get, you'll get a information about the training as well as the ability to enter your information here. And, uh, and we'll be, you know, starting tomorrow, I'll be putting together uh, training classes uh, to be able to do the Ryan training. The, uh, all right. So that concludes what I have. And now I'm just open for any particular questions that anybody might have. Um, I just went, 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 went ahead and I'm signed up for the class. Good. It uh, doesn't take much to do that. Any other, any other comments or questions from anyone else? I have a question, Roland, on the residential is there any way they could import the information from uh, like Google Maps or Street View? Um, I, I don't know. I can certainly ask. I haven't seen anything like that. I was just thinking that what might be the slickest way to rapidly get all of the information on all the houses in the in the communities. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would certainly be helpful. I can see where that would work better. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else have any comments or, or questions? Well, if they couldn't get it off of Google Maps, the counties 
pay to bait because they're constantly going around reassessing the houses and taking pictures and everything. Yeah, yeah, I, I have some concern about going around to, to uh, people's houses and taking pictures and so on <laughs> without yeah, having to without having credentials and being able to actually talk with the homeowner first before you do it, yeah. you know, and everything else associated with that. So I'm much more comfortable mm -hmm. doing uh, public facilities and, and, you know, that sort of thing than I am doing private residences. Yeah. Yep. yeah, even with Google, you can request to have your photo blurred. They always seem to come by my place with the garage door open and I don't want anybody to see that mess. <laughs> so and you can once you get trained you can go and do your own house like you can have it right there already in in the system so and also i was going to say um on the tcem website people that have had earthquake damage should go on there and then report what little damage or big damage or whatever so that it can be counted toward the damage assessment for the earthquake on the 18th or aftershocks. So their um, next week on the 8th is the last day that people can submit. So if you know of anybody that has damage from the earthquake, please let them know about that on our website, tcem.org. So we put it out in the paper, we put it out on social media, different places, but not everybody it's the paper and not everybody's on social media. So anyway. So all these pictures that are being taken and stuff, who will have access to that? Because it's like going to private people, they may say that's something they don't want. People so, have access to that. So if it's if it's for the um, disaster and you're taking pictures of people's houses or whatever, then um, it goes into our database and it's for the FEMA, you know, assessment of the entire community. It's not like, let's share it. It's just for emergency management and the assessment to make sure that we are um, fixing the places that we need to, to, you know, like for the earthquake on the 18th, the police department had mega damage on the bottom by their foundation. And so we took every possible picture we possibly could so that it can be shown this is what happened. But when we have um, pre-data, it's even better because then you know, oh, this didn't happen before and this really did happen during the earthquake, then it'll, it'll actually be better off. So that's why we're going to, after we do this training, we're going to go out and do the pre-assessments of the public infrastructure so that we have that in the database. And then should we ever have that 7.0 earthquake, which I hope never happens, we'll be able to have the baseline data and then the disaster data, and we'll be just so much better off. So it's not for public view, it's for emergency management purposes. So Robin, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. So if we have a true event that happens and we have different rapid disaster assessments happening, would the end goal be to get the information that comes back from that into this system? Yes. Yes, but not everybody will know about it or be able to do it, you know. But yes, that would be because we can take that data and put it on the GIS system and start mapping out where things are and what damage is and be able to kind of get the bigger picture of where the real big damage is and where we might need to send the public works people out and different things. So yes, we want both ways, but having um, people actually do that um, go on the website and put in their own information is actually great. So it because it proves with pictures and data. So anyway, my, yeah. my, my thinking on this is that uh, 
you know, in, in a real disaster situation, Thomas, the, we're doing a rapid, uh, you know, the, the wards or, or local neighborhoods are doing the rapid disaster assessment. That information is getting funneled back up into the uh, uh, EOC and, uh, and hopefully, you know, within the next year or so, we can get at least 100 uh, amateur radio operators trained in using this particular app and, and we can dispatch them to, uh, to, to the, the more significant issues and have them start uh, you know, working up the damage assessments and so on you know, in that fashion. So uh, uh, you know, in the aftermath of, a, of an incident, um, our amateur radio capability is gonna become pretty dang important. Agree with you there. Okay, Rob, we'll turn it back to you. All right, thanks, Roland, appreciate that. So I guess the thing here now is uh, get people to come over and sign up for the training, get ready to uh, help out a little bit more. The 5.7 earthquake was kind of a wake up call for a lot of people. Not only were we are we dealing with a pandemic, but also to be hit by an earthquake. And of course now everybody knows I had the one up there in Idaho at 5.6.5. So we never know, it can hit us at any time. I saw a meme the other day says, all those people used to laugh at us for prepping are now looking at us and going, how did you know? We didn't, we prepared. Um, all right, anything else from the club members? I have something. This is uh, okay. Kurt, one of the <laughs> black spots on your gallery. I uh, Yeah, my phone... you're all blacked out. Is your, is your power out? No, yeah, I'm having, <laughs> I'm having an emergency with my phone. The camera went down. I'm sorry about oh. that. I wanted to just introduce myself. I've sat in on this meeting uh, Roland invited me. I'm, I'm interested in joining the club. Um, I, I don't have a former experience with shortwave, but I have a lot of interest. I, I uh, as far as uh, I've never been an operator, but I've, I, I've had receivers over the years and I'm, I would just, well, I would like to be involved if possible in any help. Absolutely. We'd love to have people join and be willing to help and learning. No matter how long you've been in the hobby, you're still learning because there are so many aspects of this hobby to begin, be involved with. So you know, and there's 30, no 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah, Go well, there's ahead, no Roland. requirement to be a ham radio operator to join the club. So, uh, no. uh, Kurt, I think uh, uh, we were planning to get, send over to you a, a, a registration form. Yeah, and obviously that hasn't happened yet, or you would say that you you got it. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't received anything, but again, thanks, and, and uh, I'll try to get the camera working on my phone to be able to do this. Hey, Kurt, what's your email address? This is Mert. I'll give you an email right now with it on, and you can fill it out and send it right back to me. Okay, it's DesertQuest99 at Yahoo. So D E S E R T Q U E S T nine nine. At yahoo.com? Yep. Okay, desert quest ninety nine at yahoo.com. Yes. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Well, thanks everybody. All right, thanks, Mert. Appreciate that. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is I was approached the other day about it by a gentleman who has a family in his ward, all of them are studying to get their license. And he was asking about, you know, I just mentioned to him in passing, they don't have to go to Salt Lake for their test. And he goes, oh, I didn't know that. So if you know people that are interested in the hobby, let them know they don't have to go to Salt Lake to test anymore. We do have the, the services out here and we can definitely take care of them. So anything else? Hey Rob, I have two questions. Okay, go ahead. First one, is there any electronic method to pay dues? Google Pay, PayPal, Venmo. Mert? We do have the square that Roland has. Um, that's a great question um, that I haven't, I mean, I've, I've got a personal Venmo. I, I don't see why we can't set up a, a Venmo for the club. 
Um, that's a great question that we could we could take as a presidency and talk about that and and see what what people think. But right now, the only thing we have is a square. Can you do that from a distance, Roland, or is that got to be? Nope, I uh, I can uh, uh, you know I I don't have to swipe the card. I can type Perfect. in. Perfect. The yep. There we go. Roland can take that payment with the square that he's got. And he'll keep my credit card number too, right, Roland? Uh, no, I don't keep your credit card number, and neither does Square. <laughs> oh, good. And then, Rob, my second question is, um, I'm wondering if there's value of seeing if there's interest to put together a committee, a small committee of three or four people that would be interested in helping to get Mesh stood up in Tooele County. Um, stuff is on order for one site. A couple other sites are being evaluated. Um, so I just wanted to pose that question. I'm interested right. in that. I actually have a node ready to go. I just need somewhere to, hit, to hit, get into. I think it's a great idea to have a committee. Um, it's something we can discuss at our next leadership meeting or board meeting and we'll uh, bring that up. And if you would like to chair that, Thomas, we'll be more than happy to put you as the chair. All right, well, I have some interest in that, but I'll let you talk with your board and get back to me. Sounds good. We'll do uh, that. On that note, I've been talking with, I think it's Jacob Estep, um, who's part of the, the, the Mesh Network team in Salt Lake. And he's interested in having some backup servers and things like that for, for, um, for things that are running on the Mesh working so since I run a bunch of servers here I've offered my services to um, run some of the backups once we get mesh up here in 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 the area you know it's not a bad idea to have some geodiversity for the services that we need of across that system especially if we can get linked into the Salt Lake County area um, I think that'd be great. So that'd be something you could take care of once we get the committee, you know, once we get a committee established and then uh, go forward from there. And, um, Jay, Jay Hickup has, has, has said that he is definitely interested and he wants to do it. We just got to get it going here first and then tie it, and then tie it in. Yeah, that's, that's been the problem is trying to find a path back over there. I know they did some experimenting from uh, West Mountain to the Vernon area, and I guess they had some success with that, but I don't know how we would get it from Vernon up over into Tooele because the, uh, we, we asked about the site up on top of South Mountain and was informed that we cannot put anything private up there. That is strictly a public safety site. So we'd have to find some other way to get it over, over the sandbar. Did we put it up on um up on either farnsworth or or nels they've, they've checked those those are both commercial sites they charge for those so you know, i've been talking with uh chad bocott about that so i would love to see us get it i think it'd be awesome to get us linked in over there right away give us more territory give them more territory i mean the earthquake was centered over in salt lake there's a good possibility they'd lose a lot of the services over there what about um, Butterfield? Uh, Butterfield is another one. I think it's a pay site. And so that's the, the problem they ran into. They did have a temporary site up on Nilsen Peak. Um, but the guy asked to have the equipment removed because he had a commercial contract to go up there. Um, what about, I know there's a repeater on Antelope Island, I believe. Can they yeah, bounce from Antelope Island and then from Antelope Island out to here? It's, it's on, on the, the east side. side. It's on the back side of Animal Island, and we can't see it from here. Yeah, that's the problem. It's located on the east side of Antelope Island. It uh, does not go to the peak, so it would not look over into the valley. We would looked at that because the site out in uh, Grantsville would have been a good one for a point to point there. What about, this is just something Jacob and I talked about till we get established um he talked about setting up a vpn between his place and my place yeah um it wouldn't be, is, it'd be re 
it'd be required, it'd be dependent on the internet being up, but at least it would get us tied in. Yeah, for now it would. It would get us tied in. We've also discussed that one, uh, the ability to have that tied through via the internet, and that would be an option. So, you know, as a, until we can get a, a wireless link between us and the rest of the mesh node over on the other side. I think but, the operations is going to be getting some things set up here in the valley, and then we'll spark more interest and support from the Salt Lake Valley and be able to see more happen when we have two groups uh, enthused up and running and ready to connect. Absolutely. So since Jacob and I have been talking about that, one thing that would be handy is actually if, if we have the ability is multiple VPN connections in here. That way, if one, if one goes down, we still stay up. Well, yeah, multiple paths is always a good idea. I mean, doing a 911, we do that all the time. You want to have multiple ways of getting your signal through. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I've got a question here. I do have one question. Did anything ever go on with doing the class online for the ham radio class for the technician? Roland, would you like to address that? Yeah, uh, we're definitely pursuing it. Uh, Rex Cars has come up with a not Rex Car. Um, oh, anyway, uh, come up with a, a you know several people who are very interested in participating in that. Uh, we've had a couple of others. I'm hoping to be able to get that put, pulled together to be able to start the class on or around the middle of part of April. But nothing's firm on that yet. I have one family that's confined because of COVID. Um, family member does with um, respirators that's been used on a person with COVID. So they're all quarantined. And it's like, if I could get something like that, that'd be good for them to use for them. So they'd be studying at home. Yeah, yeah but unfortunately, we, we definitely won't be ready before the middle of April. Okay. Colin, is that something we could post on social media? <clears throat> or share on social media? Uh, we can definitely share it on social media. Is it already on the West Desert Amateur Radio Club Facebook page? That'll uh, be fine. We talked about it. I, I put up a post on the Facebook page and Sweet. got zero response on it. I'll uh, I'll share it and see if we can't get it where the... the uh, uh, you you know, know where it might be better to put that is the Twilla, nine, uh, the Twilla 411 or groups thinking. like that. Yeah. Well, a little yeah. broader audience. Okay, well, um, hang on a few days until I can figure out the, you know, whether or not we can make it work. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the logistics of it all. Because, you know, holding a three hour Zoom meeting, you know, it's okay, but it doesn't work out really well. You know, so, uh, you know, the, so far the only format that I've found that really seems to look like it might work is to do a pre recorded video. On, you know, for, for various segments on the, uh, uh, you know, on the exam or on, you know, on the technician information. So people can watch that at their own leisure and then once a week have a one hour Zoom meeting to, uh, to go over it or something. Uh, that that, that kind of seemed to be a methodology that would work, but we'll have to, you know, we'll have to see. We're going to have to probably pilot a little bit, pilot it a little bit. Have we set up a, sorry, I didn't mean to cut in. I'm sorry. Have we set up a YouTube, a way to do any YouTube? Is that something we could do is maybe add it to the YouTube channel or? or? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I did record a segment and put it up on my own YouTube channel. Okay. And, uh, uh, just as a, you know, as a part of a, part of a test. And then I put this post on our, on our social media page. And Sweet. like I said, I got no response from it at all. Okay. So I don't even know what people think about doing it in that fashion. I responded, uh, but I think you thought I was responding to the Dave Kassler link instead of yours. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's possible. That's possible. But yes, uh, I was interested in it for uh, for my boys that are thinking about studying. But but anyway, right. I didn't point that out. You had one response. <laughs> hey, Roland, I'm going to post on Tula County 411 just that we're thinking about holding a class and see if there's any interest out there if that's okay with you that would be fine with me okay yeah the virtual 
amateur radio class. See what kind of interest we can stir in it. Hey, Mark, can you, are you sharing it from your, or from the West Desert Amateur Radio? So, just so, from, just from mine, I'll just do it as like, hey, we're just thinking about, I'm not cool enough to be the admin of that. That's Roland. <laughs> Roland's the man. <laughs> oh, if it was on the West Desert Amateur Radio um, group page, it'd be easier for me to share with okay. County Emergency Management. Yeah, do that. And then uh, sharing yep, yep. personal things is not what Tooele County Emergency Management does, you know. Brilliant. So, no, that's awesome, Robin. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you got it ready, Mert, I think it'll be easy to approve it. Then Robin could share it on the, the TCEM site. Get it out. All right, anything else? Um, really quick. I have one question here. Um, just go ahead, by the way. I know that everything is so new because of everybody being shut in and stuff like that, but is the ARRL uh, putting out any information or uh, information or guidelines? and the possibility of holding test sessions on the uh, internet. I know they've done one, but I think it was just kind of a test to see what was going on. Is that being pursued? Do we know? You know, that's an excellent question. I, I think I, I will ask that question. I read somewhere where they did do one test session and it was, I can't even remember who did it, what group did it, but I was just kind of curious to see if there were anybody else that was diligently with that. Now, you know, it's essentially what, if we do it, if we do a test session right now, we've got to have three VEs and, and I'm thinking that no more than three candidates at a time in order to be able to, uh, to you know, to, to be able to do that. And uh, um, and I haven't I haven't talked to anybody over at the uh, EOC to see whether or not we could do a test session in their facility during this period of time with six people. And uh, but but, but I'm, you know I'll do that because we we need to hold a test session on the eight on the sixteenth uh, uh, of April I think it is is a uh, is a test session that uh, Casey plans to be ready for. It's on the 18th, 18th. Roland. Yeah, um, I'll be testing for my extra that day and my twin will be testing for his technician. Very good. So that's, uh, you know, but yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'll pose the question to both W5YI and to ARLVC about uh, being able to hold a, uh, a remote test session. Okay, hey, anything else? If not, um, I'll take them. Go ahead. Um, I do know a few other, other, other people who are interested in getting their lessons as well. And I've been, work, I've been working with them um, on training and learning and things like that. Okay, very good. You know, that's that's a big thing right now is we got to watch the numbers of people that we have in for the test because we do have to keep our numbers down, social distancing, all the other good stuff. Um, Roland, if you would report back on that, that'd be good. Find out if there is anything in, in the works or if it's, they're just waiting for this whole thing to get, to be passed and then start back in with the, the live test sessions. Will do. All right. Thank you. Anything else from the group? If not, I'll take a motion to dismiss. I say, I second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, sounds like we're done. Thank you everybody. It's been a real interesting experience having our club meeting online. I can see right now I need to do something about the lighting in my office, I glow. <laughs> All right, everybody have a good evening and thank you for coming tonight.